Hello everybody. Um, the last week or so has been pretty rough and um, that may be why uh, if, if you haven't seen me around quite as much um, uh, it's uh, because I've had um, sort of a crisis the last week or so. Um, I, uh, I had an aide, um, a personal assistant that was helping me um, through an agency um, and uh, she had been here for I think almost a year uh, before I realized that she had brought bed bugs uh, to my home and I, I was uh, noticing bites and um, rashes and things like that I wasn't really sure where they were coming from um, but um, you know I would have itchy welts on my my arms and um, some on my face the side of my neck uh, various different parts of my body and it was mainly when I woke up that I noticed them and um, <clears throat> then uh, one day um, she uh, picked up a little tiny bug and she said do you know if this is a tick and I said I don't know um, it, it's awfully small but I, I said you know get a jar and <clears throat> um, let me see if I can go online and identify it and um, uh, I, I took a look online at uh, several websites to identify bugs and found that it was a baby bed bug and I was like oh my god I was you know because I'm you know when you're pretty much bed bound um, that's a real disaster because you know you can't get up and do things the way everybody else can and you know you're pretty much in bed all the time and uh, you can't really just get up and you know go somewhere else that easily um, and uh, I don't have transportation and all that so um, this was a real problem um, and I had been living here 20 years and have never had a bed bug um, there's almost nobody that comes into my home so you know it it occurred to me that they had to have been coming from her when when she visited another client who probably had them had an infestation of, of some degree or another and then um, they um, hitched a ride on her and um, and uh, then when she came over to my place um, then probably got onto my sheets or pillows because where where we found the bug was on the pillow next to where next to where I am where she tends to sit and it was right where she had been actually she had dozed off and when she woke up that was what she found and um, so I was just devastated I was like what am I gonna do now because um, I've heard of people's houses who have had to be you know they've had to have their houses basically condemned they've had to just pick up and and just leave uh, whether they own the home or not uh, because um, you know they they multiply you know like like fleas do pretty much um, you know they they multiply and they you know the, the infestation gets worse and worse the only way that I was able to afford to get it treated was um, because I have a small inheritance that my father left when he died that is in a special needs trust for house repairs and you know property taxes and things like that my home is paid off but you know I still have to pay property taxes and insurance and and you know maintenance type things and that money is very limited in fact it is um, the guy that I deal with who manages the special needs trust um, told me recently that that money is slated to run out in seven years so um, I have to really be careful how I use that money and I'm also gonna have to try to put some things in place within the next seven years 
to uh, make up that money so that when that runs out that I'll be able to continue to pay my property taxes and that I won't lose my home. So taking money out of that fund is pretty much like uh, robbing Peter to pay Paul. Um, and so what I had to do was, you know, I had to, um, I had to get the um, pest control company to um, come and do this massive treatment. It's not like treating for roaches. It's a big major deal when they have to treat for bed bugs. And um, they had to, basically they sent me a, a checklist, which was really, really daunting. I mean, for, for an able-bodied person, it's kind of an irritation, but for somebody who is disabled at the level that I am, it is like a, a you know, monumental thing. And um, so um, when the pest control guy came and he, he confirmed that the little bug that I had in the jar was in fact a bed bug and he um, started to arrange um, to set up an appointment to, to treat it, um, I asked him, I said, is there anything that the aide can do to uh, you know, to nip this in the bud so that it doesn't keep spreading back and forth and back and forth because I, I really can't afford to have to treat this again. Um, and it's going to be difficult this time. Uh, so what he had said um, is that he that she should um, spray herself between each client, you know, when she leaves and then when she goes to the next client and then when she leaves them spray her with something that uh, an insecticide that's meant for um, you know to spray on the body like skin so soft um, so I assumed that since she had been here for a year and uh, I assumed that she wanted this job that she would immediately take that advice um, not only so that she wouldn't spread it back to me and then you know after my place had been treated but also other clients and her own home because you know she lives uh, she has a I think a, um, a son who is in his 20s or 30s who lives with her too so she could be taking these bed bugs back to her home too so I just assumed I mean it's a no-brainer that she would go ahead and follow that advice and uh, but in fact she didn't and you know you can smell that when somebody sprays it on them you can tell that they've sprayed and she was not doing it it was very clear that she was just sort of blowing off the whole thing as if it wasn't a big deal and I have um, one of my conditions is a mast cell disorder which um, you know basically uh, the mast cells are cells that um, you know that control uh, histamine and so in a sense I guess the best way in layman's terms to describe it is it's like allergies you know times 50 billion um, you never know what you're going to react to um, you can react to something one day and not react to, to, to that same thing the next day um, you can have minor type things like, you know, like welts, like I know with, with the bed bugs, some people don't react at all, but I had these big welts. Um, and I was also, a few weeks ago, uh, when I first started noticing the bites, I was also having episodes of anaphylaxis and I had to go to my doctor and get an EpiPen um, because I was getting to the point where I was having trouble breathing. And I had to use my oxygen that I normally use um, at night, had to use that during the day um, for uh, quite a number of days. Um, and I had uh, the veins in my right hand swell up. I didn't know at that time, I didn't know what was going on, what was biting me, what I was reacting to. Um, but it, it got pretty extreme and um, but then when I kind of figured out what was happening and how they got here um, 
and the fact that the aide was really not taking any steps to protect me or herself or anybody else, um, I called the agency and I told them, I said, you know, I don't want this woman back at my house. Uh, because I said, you know, for somebody who is healthy, it, it's, it's an irritation and, you know, but for me, it can be life threatening because I've been having anaphylactic episodes and that, you know, really, you know, that's really serious. And, um, so, um, the agency, I, I spoke with one supervisor and she seemed very nice. And the, the other thing was that when I had told the aide what needed to be done to prepare for the house to be treated, you know, all the things had to be taken off the surfaces and put into boxes and um, things had to be moved away from all the walls. Um, and, um, you know, she not not only you know after after she had brought these things into my home she copped an attitude and really didn't want to do her job and you know i had told her i said look you know i i can't do this and i said i really shouldn't have to <laughs> because i didn't bring these things in here and um you know i i can hardly be out of bed so really you know um i need you to do this and you know, she was, you know, very irritable. And, um, then she said, well, you have too much, you just have too much stuff and you keep buying more. And, you know, and this was about maybe 20 minutes after I had explained to her that I haven't bought clothes in I don't know how many years I have holes in most of my pajamas. I have a four inch hole in the middle of a sheet because it, it got torn last time I put it in the washer because the agitator, you know, ripped it. Um, and I haven't been able to afford to buy more. So, um, you know, what she was saying was totally untrue. Um, and um, because I, I have a list of things a mile long that need to be replaced and they just have to take a number until I can gradually work through them because uh, my income is so low that I just can't go out and replace things right away. Um, and, uh, you know, the things I've had to buy recently are, you know, things, you know, food for my animals. Um, you know, I can't just neglect them and not, not give them the food that they need. Um, and, uh, food for myself. Um, I'm also working on trying to, um, trying to, uh, get into a position where I can grow my own, um, vegetables. Um, I have a hydroponic setup, which I have been just sort of paying a little bit every month to try to get the equipment and everything together so that I can start growing my own food. You know, it's healthier. It's going to end up on, on the back end. It's going to end up saving me money uh, at the grocery store. Um, and, uh, you know, mainly, uh, a lot of things that, that, um, that are necessities have actually, still been put on the back burner. So, you know, when she said this to me, I was just absolutely blown away that she would say something after I had already explained this to her. She had seen, um, my comforter torn in about four places. I haven't replaced that in probably over 10 years. Um, that, that is, not in good shape and I'm just sort of dealing with it and covering it up with another blanket. Um, and then, um, you know, then there was the issue of how am I going to protect my snakes? And also, um, at the time, you know, I had two rats. Now I have one cause, um, I fed the male, you know, to my, my female ball Python. Um, but at the time I had two rats and the two hairless rats and, um, and then my two snakes. And I thought, well, you know, I don't want them to react to the, to the poison because what they were going to have to do is, um, what they do, uh, most of these pest control companies now, 
um, they spray first with uh, hot steam and that kills the bed bugs on contact and then they follow it up with some very strong very toxic poison that is specific for bed bugs um, apparently bed bugs were almost eradicated for a while and then they outlawed DDT and so um, then there was a resurgence of them because um, they were um, immune to a lot of the poisons that are used for other bugs like cockroaches and the normal kinds of things that you know pest control companies um, spray for so um, I think this hasn't been as much of a problem where I live but I know in big you know urban cities like New York City it's rampant and I read up on this and apparently there's a big problem in New York with um, home care aides just spreading bed, bed bugs from client to client to client and then they spread it back to them and it's horrible so you know I uh, you know I did a lot of research on this and um, realized that you know it's something that these agencies really need to have some kind of a protocol for uh, they really need to have their aides um, just as a precaution spraying themselves and any belongings that they bring in and out of people's homes you know when they go to a client's house and then when they leave a client's house so um, once I had talked to the agency and I'm, I'm also in the process of trying to find out whether uh, somebody uh, one of the one of the higher ups there can authorize uh, my being reimbursed uh, for the cost because it, it basically f for the cost of the, the bed bug treatment and this was actually better than a lot of companies um, it was six hundred and fifty dollars um, and then I also had them at the same time I had them treat for roaches which was a separate thing altogether um, and uh, I figured if they were going to treat for bed bugs they might as well do the whole thing and do it all at once so that that way I wouldn't have to keep um, you know moving my snakes in and out of the house um, and it still uh, it still gets fairly cold in the mornings um, here in the Atlanta area I live in Stone Mountain which is sort of a suburb outside of um, Atlanta outside the city limits um, and um, it still has been getting pretty cold in the morning and I really didn't want my snakes to um, you know get a respiratory infection or get stressed out or you know have any kind of um, illness issues as a result of, of the cold and um, so I ran into a number of you know a number of, of obstacles when I was trying to figure out how to um, you know get them out of the, the house but also somewhere where it would be warm so what I ended up doing was um, I put the snakes and the, the two rats um, in, in my garage and um, I luckily I mean this was just lucky that I I had actually considered getting rid of these two oil heaters a few few years ago and luckily for me I'm one of these people that if I think that I'm gonna use something in the future then I really think long and hard before I decide whether I'm gonna get rid of something so that ended up really being to my advantage here because I had two oil heaters and I, um, I, I moved them into the garage and um, you know I had to do and ended up having to do all of this myself because clearly the aid was really being no help and um, then um, there was a process where they had to suspend services until they got the letter from me that the, the home had been treated and all that kind of stuff so um, 
you know, I just absolutely like knocked myself out for like four days uh, to try to get everything set up. Um, and I, you know, I just had to do the best I could, you know, some things couldn't be done just perfectly. Um, but as far as the snakes, I, you know, I made them number one priority, um, that they would be in a heated environment and away from the poison. So, um, I ran into some problems, like I said, uh, the main one being that when I, I, I hooked up a, a power strip, because what I wanted to do was put their heating pads out there and prop them up on some boxes and um, put their cages, you know, um, out there and then put one heater on one side and one heater on the other side uh, to raise the ambient temperature. And um, so I took this power strip and I was going to plug all of those things into the power strip and then plug it into the wall and, in, in, you know, in the garage. But what happened when I plugged, and this was even before I had plugged their heating pads and I hadn't moved the, the heating pads out yet, but I had just, um, started to plug the, um, the oil heaters into the power strip and at first it looked like it was going to be a great success you know both of them turned on but then they sort of browned out and then all of a sudden um it seemed that the the fuse blew so it it just um you know the light in the garage went out and everything went out and i was like oh no what am i going to do now so then um what I ended up having to do, luckily I had one of those big, huge, orange, long, um, extension cords. And I didn't really have a way to plug in a power strip there because I couldn't plug it into the wall and that power strip just had a short plug. So I thought, okay, well, what I'm going to have to do is just not use the heating pads and just raise the ambient temperature enough so that it'll be warm enough for them for the three, maybe four hours um, that we would have to be out of the house um, so that uh, we would be safe from the, the, the toxicity of the poisons that were used. So what I ended up doing was, yeah, I just, um, I just ran the extension cord in from inside the house, uh, barely cracked the door so that the cord could get through. And then, um, I was really only able to use one of the heaters, but I turned it up on high, as high as it would go. And luckily that kept it nice and toasty warm in there. So um, it ended up that was all I needed to keep the snakes warm and the rats were okay. They were a little distance away, but you know, they weren't as sensitive, uh, to temperature as snakes. So, um, you know, they were just fine. So once I got the snakes taken care of and got all of that hooked up and plugged up and everything, um, I don't know how I did it, but somehow I had to like move some furniture. I had to take drawers out of dresser drawers and, you know, so that it was even doable for me to move this furniture. Um, and, um, so I got, I guess the majority of stuff done that needed to be done, um, got it done well enough. And, um, but I, as a result, I was just, my mast cell disorder was going absolutely bonkers. You know, I, my, my, my nose was pouring mucus. Um, I was itchy all over and my, my face was swollen. Um, yeah, if you could have seen me, uh, just a few days ago, uh, yeah, my face was extremely swollen, um, all up here around my eyes. Um, I was starting to have trouble breathing 
and I was sort of spontaneously falling asleep, almost like someone with narcolepsy. And so, um, but what I ended up having to do was literally set up handicapped transportation to go to a local indoor farmer's market because I had to get a few things anyway and I didn't have anybody to help me. Um, I had to get a few, you know, food items. And so I figured I would bide my time out there until they were through in the house and then come back. Well, what happened was, um, what happened was they, you know, basically, um, they were late and um, they actually didn't get to my house. They were supposed to be there at 9 a.m. that morning. They didn't actually get to my house until about 12 uh, noon, which was when I was on my way back. Um, and, you know, I had called them um, and asked them how things were going. They said they had just finished. And I was like, oh gosh. I said, well, do I still need to stay out another three hours? And the woman, the dispatcher um, had said, yes, we, that's, we really recommend that. So I said, well, I just need to check on my animals just to make sure they're okay. And my dog, Carmela, you know, she was able to stay out in the backyard, which was no problem because that's fenced in. So I knew she would be okay, but I wanted to make sure that the snakes were okay and that the heater was not getting too hot for them um, and that you know that it was staying on and all that and so I literally had to rush in there really fast and put my jacket over my face like this uh, to try to you know keep the fumes out rushed in did that um, put the perishables that I had bought at the store in the refrigerator really quick Luckily, you know, the snakes were okay. Um, they were warm enough. Everything, you know, seemed to be okay, except that, you know, my female, Velvet, was kind of um, hypervigilant because, you know, she knew she, she had been moved to a different place and she didn't know where she was. She was a little disoriented. And my male, Caduceus, um, was just hiding, you know, underneath the paper. But, you know, basically they, they were okay. Um, they were physically fine. Uh, just a little bit, I guess, um, you know, dis disoriented and, and, and a little bit scared, I think. Um, but then I basically had to take my laptop and go out on the front porch and wait another three or four hours. And sitting up in my wheelchair that long was really... Um, you know, not good for me, um, but just the way things happened, you know, everything didn't happen on time, and so, um, so I ended up pretty much having to be out there until maybe four or five, uh, in the afternoon, and then, um, you know, then I went back inside, I, uh, I got the snakes, and I put them back, usual places and um, kind of got myself situated and um, I really have been I've been having to get about probably 15 hours of sleep a day since then in order to recover um, and I've had to take extra medication uh, because even you know the dust that it that it picked up even with my, with my cleaning and everything um, it really made me react, um, and I was feeling faint, it just was not good for, for a while, uh, but after, after about four or five days of, uh, of extra sleep and extra rest, um, I'm finally on the mend, uh, from that fiasco, um, but I thought this would be a good video to make because, um, you know, pest control might not be something 
that other people who keep reptiles have thought about. Um, you know, in some respects, I was lucky having a house where I could put the the, um, the animals in the garage. But what if you what if you didn't have a house? What if you were living in an apartment? Um, what would you do with your snakes then? Um, you would pretty much have to find someone else to keep them for you the day that you had your uh, apartment sprayed. And I think to some extent this is probably true um, not only with bed bug treatment, even though that's much more extreme than spraying for roaches, but probably to be on the safe side you should do the same thing if your um, if your place is being sprayed for, for cockroaches. Um, I know that there are some companies that do have the option of um, using um, organic, um, pet-friendly uh, compounds for that. Um, I don't know if they're equally effective or if they're less effective. I, I don't know a whole lot about that. Um, but if you are going to have your place sprayed, uh, even for roaches, you should probably ask them about that. Let them know that you have reptiles, um, that they have sensitive respiratory systems, um, and uh, ask them if they have a um, you know non-toxic to pets option uh, that they can use and whether it's equally effective to the other stuff that they use. My particular company that I use didn't have that, so I had to be sure to get the animals far enough away uh, that they wouldn't breathe in these fumes. But if you um, if you live in an apartment, um, then um, that's probably the first thing you should do is find out whether um, you know whether the company that's going to be spraying has a, a um, an option of something they can use that's non-toxic to pets and only toxic to the bugs. If they don't, or if you're not able to find that answer out, um, then see whether there's anybody that can keep your, your reptiles um, during that, you know, at least for that day uh, that your, your place is being sprayed. Um, and give the fumes time to dissipate before you bring them back in. Um, that's something that's very important because um, a lot of these poisons can literally kill your pets. Um, even if you have a dog or a cat, you know, if they lick it, um, they can die. Um, and um, the, the, the best thing that I can recommend, if, you know, if you do live in an apartment, um, you may not want to, you may not want to share with the, um, you know, the, uh, management if, you know, if you have reptiles and they're not aware that you have them, you might not want to share it with them. But, um, if you can, um, you know, get somebody that you know outside of there to keep, uh, your reptiles for you on that day that, that that they're spraying, um, then that is a, a you know a good option uh, for that. Um, I also um, I also think that it's probably a good idea, and this has been covered in some other videos too. Um, that if you have really big, heavy cages like racks or heavy um, glass tanks, things like that. Um, if you have some sort of emergency transport type uh, tubs that have a top that locks, uh, you can get those at, at Walmart. Um, in fact, I have one of those for my rats. I think it's a 105 quart tub and it has um, these two handles on both ends um, that lock over the top of it so it's completely secure. Um, you know you can you can get some of those containers that are the size that you need for whatever reptiles you have. Drill holes uh, so that they can you know so they can get enough air. 
uh, but make sure that they have a locking top so that wherever you do take them um, you know to be safe from from the, from the toxins um, you will be sure that they're secure that they won't be able to get out and um, you know make sure that they have plenty of air holes um, you know that are big enough so that they can get enough air but not big enough for them to escape um, and that way you know those are a lot lighter you know the plastic tubs are a lot a uh, lot more lightweight than the uh, you know than their original cages and you can just kind of stack them and bring them where they need to go um, make sure that you know that there's a good enough heat source where you're taking them whether it's their heating pad or um, you know some small heaters like I was talking about um, and um, Hopefully, the, this kind of thing doesn't happen to you, but this is something good to know in case it does. Uh, so, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, please don't forget to um, like, um, comment, and uh, if you haven't, uh, please subscribe. Um, I don't do videos very often because, um, you know, I just have my webcam um, you know, built in to my laptop to use. And, you know, for this kind of a video, it's fine, but, um, I can't zoom and do all those fancy types of, um, you know, close up shots, um, of, of the animals. Um, uh, but I'm hoping at some point when I get a breather financially, uh, to be able to get something like a GoPro, um, where I can, you know, do, um, you know, more, more professional type videos, but, um, uh, thanks for watching. And I, I just wanted to, uh, share this with you because I thought, you know, there, there might be some things that you can take from my experience that might help you now or in the future. Okay. Thanks so much.